No sé, siento que no respetas mis decisiones. Y, y sigues hablando de lo mismo. Yo en serio estoy cansada y si no sí, vas es. a respetar eso, es mejor terminar. Finally, some honesty. After weeks of skirting around the issue, Annalie and Clayton are finally going to talk about their feelings rather than just shooting each other dirty looks. Annalie is ready to admit that she's not sure about this relationship. So how exactly do they go from that to this? Eres mi persona favorita. Oh. Para toda la vida. <laughs> Ay, Clayton, no. Me and Annalie finally broke our dry streak on sex last night. Wow, who'd have thought it? After all this time, all Annalie really needed to get in the mood was a good fight. But, Clayton, if you keep that up, you might never get lucky again. Now, before we dive into this monumental U-turn, let's rewind to the beginning. So the last time we saw these two, Clayton tried to ask Annalie to open up to her dad. He wanted her to tell her dad the truth before they got married. In return, Annalie tried to assassinate him with her eyes. She accused him of wanting her dad dead. And when we join them in this episode, we pick up where we left off, with Annalie having just stormed off. Si dices que no entiendo, Quizás puedes explicarme algo en vez de cerrar tu misma en el baño. The way that Clayton has to explain the dynamics of having an adult conversation to Annalie really says a lot. She's throwing a tantrum like a child. She clearly has problems communicating. And when she does finally open the door to him, she'd much prefer to insult him rather than talk through what's just happened. Okay, gracias. Solo quería saber que estás bien. Sí, solo quiero que dejes de hablar y ya. Yeah, the way she's behaving, it's all extremely immature. She needs to be able to have a productive conversation with the man she's supposed to be marrying. It's not exactly asking a lot, and when Clayton does finally manage to talk her down from her bitchy mood, with a lot of coaxing, reluctantly, Annalie does finally admit how she really feels. No sé, siento que no respetas mis decisiones. Y, y sigues hablando de lo mismo. Yo en serio estoy cansada, y si no sí, vas es. a respetar eso, es mejor terminar. Wow, that's a pretty serious conclusion after barely even talking. Now, this might be the first time she's actually opening up to Clayton, but the truth is, these feelings have been building up for quite some time. Life in America, life with Clayton, has all been too much for her. But for someone who demands respect, Annalie isn't exactly showing much to Clayton right now. This conclusion, the threat to break up, must seem really out of the blue for him. But thankfully, Clayton is calm. He's very rational about the whole thing. You've already come to the US. We have wedding plans. We have the gears in motion. I'm not even asking for that much. It's been over two years. Clayton's been patient with Annalie for over two years, but Annalie can't even be patient enough to talk to explain herself without immediately jumping to worst case scenario. I want to break up. So why? What's causing this? Well, there's two issues at play here. The first, the most pressing, is that Clayton wants her to tell her dad about him. That's very scary for her. But more to the point, the other issue is that Annalie has cold feet. She doesn't seem sure about this wedding, and that is why, yet again, she brings up the topic of breaking up. Tú no me entiendes, y si nunca me vas a entender, en el futuro tampoco, entonces para qué seguir? Judging by what Annalie's saying, the serious accusations that she's making, her issues aren't just based on the fact that Clayton wants her to tell her dad about him. It seems much deeper than that. She's been harbouring this resentment, these feelings of misunderstanding, for quite a long time. There's very real pain in her words, but equally, when Clayton says that he feels like he's being hidden, something suddenly strikes a chord with Annalie. She softens. It all happens so quickly. Solo no publico porque si obvio mi papá no sabe, pero solo quiero hacerte feliz. 
For the first time, Annalie can see just how hurt Clayton is by her actions. She suddenly seems to understand that her hiding him from the world makes him feel unloved, makes him feel like a dirty little secret, the kind of thing that his ex also used to do to him. And as if the penny has finally dropped for her, Annalie decides she doesn't want to remind Clayton of his ex. She's okay to finally post a measly photo of them together on her Instagram. So there and then, she pulls out her phone and she posts a photo. No me alcanzan las palabras para describir lo que siento por este ser tan increíble que llegó a mi vida para hacerme la chica más feliz del mundo. Posting a picture on social media may be a small gesture, but to Clayton, it means the world. He's so happy that Annalie's changed her position. Let's not forget, Clayton has had a history of being hidden. He's had a history of being cheated on. So this public declaration of love from Annalie feels extremely validating for him. Now, is it going to solve all of their relationship problems? No, of course not. They still haven't tackled the issue of dishonesty with Annalie's dad. But for right now, Annalie's post is enough for Clayton. Eres mi persona favorita. Oh. Para toda la vida. <laughs> Publicado. Those two words, for life, tell everyone that Annalie is now in a committed relationship. Now, of course, maybe her dad doesn't have Instagram, or maybe she blocked him from seeing that post. But assuming this is now public for everyone to see, honestly, Annalie, it really wasn't all that hard. It feels like she was massively overthinking things. It's immediately noticeable that a weight has been lifted off her shoulders. And when we join them the next morning, we find out that that was all she needed to get herself in the mood. Or should I say, get on the train. It only took about two months, but the train finally pulled into the station and we both got off. We both got off. Wow, Clayton, how romantic comparing your fiancé to a train. Now, regardless of the metaphor, this is a huge moment for Clayton and Annalie. It's almost symbolic that finally they're back on track, they're on the same page. For the first time since Annalise arrived in the States, we can actually see their connection, a warmth between them. It's both sweet and cringy at the same time. Look, barking and tail wagging aside, it's just nice to see these two laughing with each other, isn't it? They finally look like a couple that at least like each other. That's a big deal given their track record to date. And as they head out for a little beach date, I don't know whether it's the endorphins talking, but Annalie shares that she wants to move to San Diego. The thing is, that's not on the cards for Clayton. Vivir aquí no es una opción por ese momento, porque no, no puedo pagar para yo, tú, mi mamá. Don't forget the guinea pigs, the dogs, and all the boxes that your mum's hoarded, Clayton. If there's one thing that's guaranteed to kill Clayton's newfound sex appeal in Annalie's eyes, it's likely to be mentioning the fact they'll perpetually be living with his mum. That is not what Annalie signed up for. Se me para el corazón un poco. ¿Qué vamos a ponerle en otro closet? No, absolutamente no. The determination in Annalie's voice when she says absolutely not makes it pretty clear she is worried about spending the rest of her days with her mother-in-law in a closet. She wants to make it clear that is not on the cards, it's not happening. In fact, it's not even worth talking about. Because pretty swiftly, talk moves on to their wedding plans. And Annalie has some pretty interesting ideas. Sería el, el, la, el cuy, quizás también una llama. Una llama. Quizás uh, podemos ponerle como una bufanda de colores. Who is this person and what have they done with the real Annalie? 
In the space of 24 hours, she's gone from wanting to break up with Clayton to finally having sex with him and insisting on having guinea pigs at their wedding. Now, in all seriousness, this for her is a token gesture, a link to her Peruvian culture. And of course, given that a wedding is both of their special days, it's important that they both feel special on their wedding day. But it takes a lot of planning. So who are they going to call to help with those plans? Well, fear not, because they've got a superb wedding specialist to help. Clayton's sister, Brandy. She's been married and divorced three times. It's hard to imagine someone with more experience than this. <laughs> That's so bad. I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> it's definitely comforting to know Brandy can help out with the wedding planning. And hey, if things don't work out, by the sounds of things, she can probably help with the divorce too. It's a win-win. Now, as we all know, Brandy is quite hot-headed. So when Clayton calls her and begins to list out his ridiculous demands, it's really only a matter of time before she snaps. I need uh, a person in a guinea pig costume. We also need potentially a llama or an alpaca, whichever is available. Look, even by Brandy standards, that is a pretty normal reaction to being asked to find a man to dress up in a guinea pig costume for a wedding, right? It's an odd ask, to say the least, and Brandy has every right to start to get frustrated. Where do you even begin to search for something like that? Heck, why is she being roped in to look for that in the first place? She tells us that so far she's been tasked with the bachelorette party, the photographer and the cake. At this point, she should be getting paid because she's practically taken on the whole role of wedding planner. It's understandable that her patience is wearing thin. So thin that she has enough and she hangs up the phone. The guinea pig request, the llama, but I'm not doing that. I'm done with this. Honestly, I can see Brandy's point. If Clayton can afford to spend days in California ahead of the wedding, heck, if he can spend so much time playing video games, why can't he himself address these so-called urgent responsibilities? Responsibilities that are very quirky to say the least. With less than 30 days left to their wedding, their to-do list is getting bigger and furrier. And with Brandy clearly having enough, that puts the pressure right back on Clayton's shoulders. The wedding date is fast approaching. Um, kind of anxious because we don't have a lot of time left. A lot of pressure is on me because of the language barrier. Look, I know that this episode was a real breakthrough for Clayton and Annalie. They had sex and they posted a photo on Instagram. Like, hooray, something is progressing in the right direction. But that doesn't mean there isn't also very real issues still remaining. Annalie is clearly unhappy living in a cramped apartment with Clayton's mum. She expressed some very serious concerns when she was talking about breaking up. Let's not forget, she also still hasn't told her dad about Clayton. So while Clayton may think that ahead of the wedding, the biggest issue is finding someone to dress up as a guinea pig, there might still be more drama ahead than he's anticipating. 